one. Oh, wait no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I'm your host, Joseph, and it is here on this very podcast where each and every Thursday we talk about the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation. So with that said, the greatest co-host, whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, Joe. Man, it's almost like we had a couple of tries before that. And you what? I don't know what you're talking about. And yeah. our special guest this evening... Mr. Luke Lord, the Insipid Ghost from the Xbox Drive. How are you, sir? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you guys having me over here. It's my spring break. I'm getting to, to talk some PlayStation. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're real appreciative of having you on this week, <laughs> you know? You haven't been the bait of my existence for the past 15 minutes. Not one bit. Sean, yeah, well, talk. I don't know how you feel. Stand me up for Apex one more time. See what happens. <laughs> With that, talking about games, talking about Square Enix at E3, there's a whole yeah. lot of talk of rumors about that. We got some Fortnite in the news for some good reasons, some bad reasons. Got a lot of Avengers in the news. We're talking about the PlayStation Gear Store coming back. Rumors mm-hmm. of a Super Sim PlayStation landing this year. But we, before we talk about all those good stuff, all that news, let's talk about what we've been playing. And let's limit it, because we got a lot of news, to one game per person, please. Kyle, just one? Just one. All right. Uh, I haven't been playing a whole lot because I've been trying to catch up on Game of Thrones and uh, the MCU rewatch before I see Endgame tomorrow or tonight uh, if you're listening to this as it's released. What, um, what so movie played, are you on right now? Uh, well, I'm I'm just watching Infinity War. Oh, okay. So right. I'm gonna rewatch. I watched it last night. I fell asleep because I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna rewatch it again tonight with commentary and and be fully immersed and ready. I never to go. listen to the commentary ever. Oh, life. it's some of my favorite stuff to do. Um, but mm-hmm. I've been playing the show, continuing my road to the show to get my character of the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, still loving it. Um, but you know what I'm waiting for, Joe? I'm waiting What's for that? you to say, "Hey, Kyle, yeah. I want to play Borderlands with you." Let's. I'll do it. After finals, that's sure. one week. Let's do it. I'm in hell right now, but after this week, it's all good. We'll play the fudge out of Borderlands, sir. I'm excited. Very you excited. see that? You see, I didn't say that word, Luke, that I'm not allowed to say when you're on the show because you have a real job. Luke, what are you <laughs> playing? Man? Oh, man. Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil, but I'll talk about uh, Resident Evil 2. I'll tell you what, man. That, that I played through the Leon campaign, mm-hmm. and it, it, it's weird because... It's a game that I mean, these glasses distract me. It's it's weird because I thought it was going to be uh, more horror, yeah. And indeed, it's been more shooter, but not shooter. It it was this weird kind of in between. I thought it was either Resident Evil Seven or Resident Evil Four, and it really does kind of go, toe the line in between. Um, and I'm anxious to play through on Claire to see uh, what perspective that gives me of the game overall. Because I'm told you need to have both. Yeah, I played as Leon, and it was man. I I was terrified the whole entire time because Mr. X is truly terrifying to me. I don't like something I can't kill in a game. So playing as Claire, things get real, real fast, and Mm -hmm. I need to go back to it. But right now, Resident Evil, man, so freaking good. Do you do you understand why everybody like is singing this game's praises, or you kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's all right, guys, it's whatever. The latter. I, I'm kind of confused as to why this spoke to so many people, but Resident Evil 2 was never my game on PlayStation 1. You know, I didn't, the camera never, I, I couldn't get past tank controls and camera controls from, from back in the day. So I don't have that nostalgia. However, all that to say, I I think it's a fantastic video game and I, I loved it. It just, it didn't. It didn't reach the heights that I think people were trying to get there. Yeah, but 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 I, I'm glad I bought it. I'm yeah. glad to that I played it, and I'm going to continue playing so I can put finish Claire. Okay, okay. For me, I've been playing a little game called Ghost Giant. I got a, a review code from Zoink Games. I got to finally play it over the weekend, and it retails for about twenty nine ninety nine. I mm. did a review for it on, or should you buy rather, on Bad Bit Games if you want to hear more in depth about it. But this is by far one of the greatest VR games I've ever played. Uh, you exciting. need to go out there and and buy this game immediately. Because yeah. what it does in VR is kind of like what all games well, do in VR. Like when it comes to puzzles, you're manipulating the world around you, you know, ripping off roofs, or like you're actually using the mic on the on the headset to like blow gusts of wind to push like various objects to get out of the way for Lewis across. Like 
there's a lot of things it does that VR is just good at. And Zoink Games does a competent job at doing that. It's just how they tell the story and how you, you're you attached to Lewis within the first scene. Unless you're a robot like Luke, you get attached to this thing. <laughs> it is this little kid immediately because, you know, just like in every great game, every great relationship, you look at like Kratos and Boy or you're looking at Ellie and... Um, and Joel, you're always looking from an outsider's perspective and you're getting, you know, Joel's perspective or Ellie. You're never really the character. And with Ghost Giant, it really does make a point that you are the Ghost Giant. You, the person playing, is what this kid needs in his life right now. And the story is is perfectly Pixar. Even, like, the music just reminds me of what a Pixar movie would be in a video game form where there's something for everyone. If you're a kid, you're going to like it for the puzzles and because, you know, everything's all wacky and colorful. But, like, if you're an adult, it tells really serious themes of anxiety and depression and it gets real really fast. You get emotional. Like, I borderline cried at the end. And that's the only bad thing about VR is because when you almost sob in a VR headset, it fogs up. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man, that's a... So it there wow. there's just a scene that goes from like zero to one hundred like that, and it's just like it, man. Like as someone who struggles with anxiety and depression, it just hit home mm-hmm. really hard for me. So I gotta say, just for the narrative alone, this game is absolutely worth it. That's awesome to hear because I know how much you were looking forward to it. Dude, I was so pumped. Yeah. I was so pumped, so excited. So again, another great reason to own PlayStation VR. That's what we've been playing. And Kyle, let's get to the news, shall we? What is on the first list of the goobers, sir? Oh, well, it's a new segment, Joe. Would you like to announce the new segment? You know what, sir? I would like to. It's a new segment I'd like to call. Kyle, we're in the end game now. Oh. Uh, this goober comes from GameSpot. Square Enix E3 2019 live event gets date and time. The Square Enix E3 2019 showcase will air Monday, June 10th at 6 p.m. Pacific. Last year's stream showed off Kingdom Hearts 3, Just Cause 4, and Octopath Traveler, all of which are out now. The Final Fantasy VII remake was noticeably absent, so perhaps we'll see some of that this year. Bobo Tap writes in. Man, well, that, was, that was a really... I'm sorry, that was my bad on that one. Bobo Tap writes in... What are your thoughts on Square Enix taking the daddy spot, Sony's, at E3 this year? What do you think we'll see out of them? What would you like to see from them? So, yeah, this is strange because usually Square Enix, I believe, is Monday morning, like right before, Mm -hmm. I would like to say right before Nintendo. No. No, No, I think it's it's in between um, two, weren't there? Like, didn't last year, didn't we have Ubisoft and then... Square Enix. And yeah, then no, it's one? Ubisoft, and then it's Sony, and then in the morning it's Square Enix. Okay, and then yeah, then the next day it's Nintendo. There you go. Yeah. So with that, how do you feel about this time slot? Them taking the daddy position, as some ladies would like, or some dudes <laughs> would like to call it. Um, I'm gonna go with you know what? I'm not gonna go with the guest. Kyle, oh. what are your thoughts Ooh. about them taking Sony's position? Does this mean we're going to see something big? Uh, yes and no. Um, I think it's about time we see whatever the Avengers game is. Mm. I think it's a time we see a small update on Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, but I, I don't, I'm not going to have high hopes for this because of how bad last year's was. Yeah. I think last year's, uh, I actually did a watch along with you and Sean Capri, I believe. And it was, it was very, there was some good stuff in there, but it was weirdly paced. And I think the highlights were the shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yep, and that's and it. yeah, D- didn't they announce that? Uh, what was that? The Death Game, where oh, the um, I forgot what it was called, but it was you, the main character was deaf, and there was no dialogue, and you yeah. be- and you find out you beat it, and then the dialogue comes back, and it still makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like- <laughs> it was like it was. It was like, it was straight up terrible, straight up garbage. Game. Yeah, so oh, I'm goodness. sure we'll see some of that. Okay. Um, as long as we get like a, a really cool looking RPG from them, because that's to me Square Enix screams RPGs. Mm. Um, I'll, I'd be happy, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely think Avengers game is a shoe in for, for this one. What about you? Does this mean they have big news, or this is just Square Enix filling up a spot? 
Oh boy, they better have big news because there are many ways. There are many ways to to present content at E3, and if you are going to knowingly ahead of time take the slot that was originally held by one of the biggest first parties to ever be at E3, then you better have something when you show up. And uh, it needs to be Avengers, cause unless there's something that we don't know about, it needs to be Avengers, and it needs to impress. Yeah. So with that, I mean, Avengers Week is this week, so we're running off the high of Avengers. Do you really think, though, is it Avengers? Like, what are the possibilities of this thing being at the show floor? And even if they show it off, isn't it up like a PlayStation 5, Xbox, whatever game? I'm going to go with you, Kyle. Let's see. That's, that's interesting that it would be like the next generation only thing. Um I do think we see it because it was. It's been what two years since they announced it at E three. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely think we need to see something out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a one hundred percent will be there. I, I I really would be shocked if it's not. If it if it's not, this whole thing is is a loss. A like there's yeah. there's no reason to even have it. What about you, sir, Luke? What are you what are you thinking here? What are the chances? What are the odds? So you got a 90% chance of seeing Avengers there. I mean, okay. you have to. Square Enix's catalog doesn't exist without it uh, at this point because Just Cause 4 came out and uh, Octopath has been out. So Kingdom Hearts is out. Final Fantasy is the only other thing in their, in their catalog. Yeah. So, okay, then my question to you, Luke, is your dream Avengers game. What is it? What, what do you want to see from an Avengers title? Because we have the Ultimate Alliance game coming from Nintendo... Um, this summer, which is, you know, the top-down Diablo-esque game that I kind of thought Avengers was going to be, what mm-hmm. would you want then in replace of that ultimate style uh, gameplay? What would you like to see from it? It's hard to... Uh, gut reaction is I want a single-player narrative much the way Spider-Man PS4 existed, yeah. right? But that's not what the core of Avengers is. The idea of Avengers is to be a team. And so you expect three to six player squad based over the third person over the shoulder destiny or Anthem division type of world. But that doesn't make sense in, in all the narrative aspects. And so ultimately uh, we've not seen anything except for that teaser, you know, a couple of years ago. And they've been, I think actively purposely staying out of the way of the MCU so to let that kind of have its climactic moment, and then they can act- activate the 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 gaming uh, the gaming universe, yeah. Uh, and we'll find out how it ties in. So I don't know what the dream game truly is. It's kind of like Star Wars for me that it's this nebulous thing. I know is soon, but I don't know tangibly what it could be. Mm-hmm. Kyle, what is it? Answer, answer Man. this. He, this guy can't. He can't answer this. He doesn't know. <laughs> you know what's the dream uh, game? The Make dream game would be you are either Cap or or mm-hmm. Iron Man. <laughs> And you're going out, and it, much like, um, this might not make a whole lot of sense, but much like the Mass Effect 2 loyalty missions, you're mm-hmm. going out and you're recruiting these other heroes to be part of the team and earning their trust and their and their their loyal loyalty to Avengers. And then you can pick who you want on the team to go out on these missions, mm-hmm. and then the missions kind of act like uh, an Arkham and Spider-Man-esque thing. Because I think that works so well for superhero games. Okay. And then um, kind of like a mix between GTA V, like where you could switch between characters. That's in different cool. parts of the level. Um, and like you all converge at the end type thing to fight the big bad or whatever. Just just imagine GTA V. Uh, you know the missions where you did transfer. One was sniping and then the other yeah. one was moving. Mm-hmm. Imagine playing out the Battle of New York yes. with that. That'd be a neat idea. Remember how the Absolutely. Can- the camera would transition from one character to the next and next. Yep. Um, the, that's a that's a lot of scripting, and I don't know how if you would get that team based or if you'd play that solo. Um, but that's certainly a cool idea. Yeah. You know, I, I got to say this before I do my scenario of what I would like this game to be. We're having one hell of an episode with network problems and connections losses and all this jazz. That all of a fun. sudden, my PC decides, you know what? We're gonna update the Twitch app. Which I didn't even know I had a Twitch app on my PC. So something just might blow up, and I need to Sweet. warn you guys about it. With that, though, um, that sounds really cool. 
I would love to see how, yeah, they mix up and they blend that GTA style like gameplay. If you, if what you're saying is correct, that sounds really awesome. One minute you're playing as Cap, then the next you're playing as Iron Man, and you're kind of like mixing and mashing, and the gameplay loop is just continuous of like switching off between all these different various play play types. I do. It's it's. I do. What idea is Square Enix? Forgive the question, but to bluntly state it, are they good enough to pull that off? I don't know. What? Because I don't think they've put out something of that caliber. Like, what we're in grandiose thought, yeah. perfect world th- coming up with. Very few studios are capable of that. I think of Rocksteady. I think of uh, Rockstar. Yeah. And I'm kind of out of a maybe Naughty Dog. Right. But, like, who else could pull that off? I mean, we, you know, uh, this is the team that made. You know the Tomb Raider games. Yeah, it's Crystal, uh, Crystal Dynamics. Dynamics. So you know, I which have all been good, very good. good. Yeah, but but the the level that we're speaking, right? Well, I mean, when Rocksteady came to out, you know, the the first game, it was, we were skeptical because they were a new studio, right? And they mm-hmm. attached Nether Realm to it. They're like, oh look, and Nether Realm's kind of helping them out when it comes to the combat. So it's just like. I'm giving them credit because they have decades worth of talent and a pedigree behind the studio. Me though, my I'm not, I'm you gave me the best case scenario, my worst case scenario. Here we go. You create your own Avenger. Ooh. That would be the fucking worst thing I never want. Yeah. And like and why? why because I want to be Captain America. I don't want City of Heroes. I'm sorry, Dan, if you're listening. But, like, I don't want City of Heroes. That's also very much like the Lego games now, where you can create your own superhero. Yeah, just just let me be Thor. Let me be Cap. Let me be Iron Man. Just give me those characters. What I'm afraid it's going to be is you have to assemble your own team. So you're going to be generic superhero A, and you're meeting Captain America. You're meeting Black Panther. You're meeting Spider-Man. You're not experiencing it. You know. Can I? Mm. Can I make? What if instead of you're a superhero, what if you are Nick Fury and you are the head of Shield and you have to go out and? And this is and, Shield Management 2019. Yeah, simulator. exactly. Uh, but like to answer your question, Luke, I do kind of trust Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix with this mm-hmm. because Bill Roseman, who is works at Marvel, he's like the head of Marvel Games. He said a long time ago when they said, "Why is Spider Man? Why did you give it to Insomniac?" Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. said he. He wants to give it to companies and developers who get the source and they know they have a unique vision and that they trust with them to make it. I because you know Marvel franchises are huge and wildly popular. Yeah. They don't want to give it to a team and to you know produce something that's low quality. Right. So like I have full faith in Bill Roseman to pick these teams to make these games. Apparently, mm-hmm. the Iron Man one, the VR game, is way more than just an on rails thing. Um, yeah. which is and the awesome impression hear, so but... far is very good. Yeah, like, so I'm like I, I yeah. trust Bill Roseman to pick the right teams to make these games, and right. let's hope it's even it's... if it's even close to Spider Man. Yeah. Now, do you I'm think happy. this is going to be in the same universe? This is a yes. yay or nay? Yeah, you think? It's yes. So we're going to see we're going to see the Peter Man, uh, Peter Man, the Spider Man, the Peter Man. Um, <laughs> the P- Peter Man. I'm so tired. Four hours of sleep. But like, do you think we're going to see that Spider-Man from PlayStation 4 in this game? I don't think he'll be in the game. No, not him. No, no, it's in the universe. You'll see Taskmaster or maybe some of the other villains that, that, without trying to be too spoiler, show up. But I don't think you see Spider-Man in a a stated, consistent capacity. Or maybe like a news report thing of like what happened in New York during that. Yeah, this is White Spider Man, White White Spider Universe, Peter Parker. Yeah, you know, I think this is. Well, I don't see color, Luke, but yeah, I see where you're coming at. But, or what if Miles shows up and you're training Miles the whole time? Oh my god, that would be dope. <laughs> no, that would be cool. I I want it to be in the universe. So me, I would like to say yes, it is in the universe. Though I do think seeing the game that Nintendo is making, I think Marvel is just looking to make really good games and not have them connect because when you're going out to all these developers. You know, from different studios and different you know places and parts of the globe, it, there's just no pun intended, like a web that is very easy to get tangled in if you're not careful. So I think they're really they're I think they're building universes within these character arcs, like Spider Man's its own universe from the Avengers, and the Avenger game is in its own universe, and I don't think they collide 
with each other. But I would like it to, and I would like it to be explained why the Avengers were in New York City when, when the whole thing was going down in Spider-Man PlayStation 4. That would be my dream scenario. Yeah. With that, Kyle, yeah. let's talk about more Avengers stuff, man. Oh, uh, man, my body's not ready. Yeah, the Avengers oh, thing, but I thought we were we were through with this Fortnite business, but here we are. Uh, the next goober comes from GameSpot. Fortnite cross Avengers endgame mode coming. This week, Epic Games began teasing a Fortnite crossover event with the upcoming blockbuster Avengers Endgame, which releases in theaters this week. Epic initially shared an image that showed a Battle Royale character wielding Captain America's iconic shield. Now, a second teaser image for the game's upcoming event features another piece of famed superhero equipment, Thor's Enchanted Axe Stormbreaker. Like the first teaser, this one quotes the whatever from Endgame and gives a release date of April 25th, along with the hashtag Fortnite Cross Avengers hashtag. We see less of the character this time around, instead just barely seeing the hand clutching the axe. Let me tell you, it goes to show what this episode's going to be. Right when you said the hashtag, your your mic clipped out, so it goes, whatever. <laughs> it was amazing. It was the most amazing thing I ever heard in my life. Uh, yeah, whatever, uh, whatever it takes, hashtag. Okay, here's the deal. I'm back in. Just like that, that's all you got to do to get me back playing Fortnite. Now, the next image that we've seen, this is a, an update from the story, is we see one of the characters with the Iron Man repulsor beam hand Ooh, things. Okay. I'm 100% in, Kyle. I mean, it, this does excite me. This yeah. does what does make me want to hop in and see yeah. how they work in the world of Fortnite. Now, Luke, I know you have no interest in Fortnite, but I have this question for you. Are we finally going to get skins from Avengers in Fortnite? Because that last time we just fought Thanos, and I just need to repeat for the audience here, I never lost. I beat Thanos every single time. I'm really excited for this because I loved the first game mode. I really do hope it comes back. What do you think this game mode is going to be, though? Do you think it's only Thanos, or do you think you're finding weapons in the game? Like, what would your dream scenario be? I'm going to go with you, Luke, on this one. Joe, I'd have to abstain from this because I've never played Fortnite, and I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I like that. I like that. Kyle, what about you while I pretend I have repulses for hands? Uh, I, I think it would be cool to to find them organically throughout the world. Um, yeah. The, the, the I'm island distracting is you, changing. Am I? <laughs> Are there any hints that the island is going to change with it? I don't know, but that would be cool. Like, what if, if we get okay. Star Tower and stuff? What if... Like Thanos does like a snap, like there's a cinematic, and parts of the island are are like he Ooh. uses a time gem, and like bam, cool. part of the island comes back to the original days, right? Like you get the stadium, the the golf stadium back, you get the uh, the movie theater back, you know, that'd mm-hmm. be freaking hella dope. That'd be cool. Oh, I'd be so in. Oh, I'd be so in. You know what, guys? Here's the next question. You think Steve's gonna die in this one? Oh, let's get real. I don't actually. Is Steve in Fortnite? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Cap, you think Cap's gonna go in in Endgame? I'm thinking he does. Uh, are we allowed? To, are we talk? Do we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a PlayStation podcast, but let's yeah. be honest. As long as we don't, if you know the spoilers, that. Luke, don't actually say the yeah, real spoilers. Sure. I I don't know anything at the time of this recording. Um, yeah. I think you got to kill at least one of them, and it is appropriate for Steve's arc. Yeah. to go but uh if there's one thing i'm well aware of it's that the russo brothers are capable of creating cinema that's that's shocking despite knowing comics so i don't know i i do not think steve dies i think tony dies but uh i think since i feel like time travels a thing in endgame uh, from the trailers mm-hmm. i think steve will actually go back in time and live out his days with peggy and i think that's where he'll oh leave. damn that's fucking beautiful that's what I, that's what I hope. I don't want to see Cap die because I will be crushed. I will be crushed. Oh, that's a that's a good one. Um, prepare to get crushed. I think everybody. But does. what's gonna happen when Peter sees Mace Windu? <laughs> that's what I need to know. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen when he sees when he sees him? He's just like, wait a second, you're from those old movies, you know. <laughs> Oh, God. I think Tony dies, but in the way of he becomes a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pepper is just like, I got a baby. He's just like, I'm retired. 
I love that we're now just talking Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. Yeah. I think in the future of MCU, though, I think Tony dies, but then his his voice becomes the AI whoever takes up the mantle of Iron Man. So instead of Friday or Jarvis, it's Tony Stark talking as the, the man in the suit. Just Okay, the reason why I don't think he dies is because it's not a lot of work to be Iron Man. Like, he doesn't have to work out and, like... But I just want Shuri as Iron Man, or Iron Woman, or Ironheart, whatever it is, because I don't know the comics that well. Like, I want Shuri to take over the mantle. Yeah, no, she, she's, she's dope. I don't know, man. I would just... I think he's, like, the godfather figure. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if you can take him down. But you know what? We're going to find out. And don't yeah. say it in the comments. Don't be that person. Don't be a piece of shit person, all right? Don't be that person. Kyle, next story on yeah. the list, sir. Now we're getting to some real stuff. Now we're really in the end game. Read me a story. <laughs> Robbie Bobby, Bobby Miller, throw those tallies up, my friend. This Nick Scooper comes from Polygon. How Fortnite's success led to months of intense crunch at Epic Games. The popularity of Fortnite has been transformative for Epic Games. But the game's explosive growth led to months of intense crunch for Epic employees and contractors, some of whom say they felt extreme pressure to work grueling hours to maintain Fortnite's success and profitability, resulting in a toxic, stressful environment at the company. In a dozen interviews conducted by Polygon over a period of several months, current and former employees say the regular work in excess of regular excuse me you say they this. regularly worked in excess of 70 hour weeks, with some reporting 100 hour weeks. Contract staff in Epic's quality assurance and customer service departments spoke of a stressful and hostile hostile working environment in which working overtime, while officially voluntary, was an expected service to the company. Although contract staff were paid overtime, developers report a culture of fear in which they were expected to pull long hours as part of their job. Some reported suffering health issues after working consecutive months of 70-hour weeks. Polygon interviewed current and former employees of Epic, including full-time staff, managers, and contractors working in development, QA, and customer service departments. They all requested that their identities be protected for fear of retribution from Epic or other employees, employers in the game industry. Epic requires that current and former staff sign non-disclosure agreements limiting their ability to speak about the company's operations. Quote, I work an average 70 hours a week, so one employee. There's probably at least 50 or even 100 other people at Epic working these hours. I know people who pull 100-hour weeks. The company gives us unlimited time off, but it's almost impossible to take the time. If I take time off, the workload falls on other people, and no one wants to be that guy. The biggest problem is that we're patching all the time. The executives are focused on keeping Fortnite popular for as long as possible, especially with all the new competition that's coming in. End quote. A representative for Epic conceded that workers had endured extreme working hours. Quote, People are working very hard on Fortnite and other Epic efforts, said a spokesperson, spokesperson in an email interview. Extreme situations such as 100-hour hour work weeks are incredibly rare, and in those instances, we seek to immediately remedy them to avoid recurrence. The executives keep reacting and changing things, said the source. Everything has to be done immediately. We're not allowed to spend time on anything. If something breaks, a weapon, say, then we can't just turn it off and fix it with the next patch. It has to be fixed immediately. And all the while, we're still working on the next week's patch. It's brutal. I hardly sleep. I'm grumpy at home. I have no energy to go out. Getting a weekend away from work is a major achievement. If I take a Sunday off, a Saturday off, I feel guilty. I'm not being forced to work this way, but if I don't, then the job won't get done. Epic said that the sudden success of Fortnite Battle Royale had created difficulties. Fortnite achieved a far higher level of success than we had ever anticipated, said a spokesperson. Everybody throughout Epic responded to the success with incredible vigor, vigor and commitment. The Fortnite team rapidly expanded the game to grow the audience. The Unreal Engine, Engine team began a broad effort to optimize for 60 frames per second and support seven platforms. Others throughout the company moved to Fortnite to maintain momentum. According to multiple sources, workers at Epic operate on an implicit understanding that working crunch is an expected part of their role. This attitude towards crunch has become a trend in the AAA game industry and is routinely, routinely cited in reporting on crunch at other studios. Mm. I know some people who just refuse to work weekends and then we miss a deadline because their part of the package wasn't completed and they were fired, said another source. People are losing their jobs because they don't want to work these hours. Another, another source said, I've had friends come to me and say, I can't take this anymore. I've had friends break down in tears. The crunch is constant. Kyle. Let me take some water. 
a round of applause. A round of applause, everybody in your car, you can open your eyes now, okay? That was a fantastic read by Mr. Kyle Stevenson. If you heard any of that noise going on in the background, I would like to know as much as you know, or like want to know what was going on back there, because I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I'm very curious to find out. Um, with that, so this is just half of the article. This is coming from Polygon, not Kotaku, not the great Jason Schreier, but I believe uh, Colin Campbell. Over there, at yeah, Polygon. another well, a very well respected games journalist. So high pedigree. That, I I I take this article and I didn't want to really boilerplate it that much because I feel like those quotes needed to be said. It's mm-hmm. not just Anthem. It's not just Bioware. It's not the just games that have troubled troubled developments, right? It's also games that are super successful, like Fortnite. And my question is with this is what is your your guttural reaction? I'll go to you, Luke, since Kyle, you talk so much. <laughs> Very little surprise. There's almost no surprise that the world's most demanding game, the most quick quick reacting game. We see we see them react to modern culture trends with NFL or Avenger skins. We see them put in. Uh, one thing that Fortnite does very well is take the ideas of others and make them better, improve upon them. Uh, and in order to do that, they've got to be constantly patching and iterating. So it's not surprising to me at all that their staff is working such uh, remarkable hours. And it's so interesting to me that over the past few weeks, we see contrary uh, stories. One where Epic's so great for doing X, Y, and Z, putting out their money, support, trying to support other developers via the Epic Store uh, exchange rates. And then also we see stuff like this. It is not surprising to me at all. And my hope is that uh, as the largest game companies and game um, creators are put under spotlight for stuff like this, Mm -hmm. that they work to change their culture. The problem is that when you create something that's as profitable as a FIFA, as uh, an Anthem, which was quite profitable, as Division 1 through to 2 and so on, when you create these games that are uh, so demanding and yet generate so much revenue, it's very hard, I think, for management to to take care of their employees in this way instead of making that money. And I think that's the, the very negative side of the industry. So it doesn't surprise me. It makes me sad. I hope to see that spotlight uh, force some change there. Uh, I know unionization is something that's often brought up. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reality is there is no silver bullet. There is no magic. They know snap that will fix it. It needs to be a industry-wide culture shift. And that comes from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom uh, working cohesively. And that's tough. I think I mean I think you hit it right on right on the the head there. It's just like there's no silver bullet, and yeah, like for me, I'm not surprised whatsoever. Looking at like and I've given this game so much praise because of how fast it's able to work on things and patch things and put new content out there and it's quality content. Like when Apex dropped in less than like a week or two, right? They had a ping system. That's mm-hmm. not something that is just like we decided we'd toss it in there. Like that's hours upon hours of work. Like the constant restructuring of the map of the balance of everything, like just the end, like with the integrity of the engine, like those are so many things you have to manipulate to make work in this, in this game that I'm not surprised. I'm just, I'm just like, I feel like I'm part of the problem because I given this game so much praise. And now to mm-hmm. see it, I'm not shocked. I'm just, damn. You know, yeah. what is your thoughts about it, Kyle? I, 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 first off, I, I agree with what both of you said. I think when I think crunch, I think it's probably worse with these type of games where it's a constant, like, ooh, what's next? Mm-hmm. Bring me something new. How are we going to keep up type thing? But the, the one quote that really bothered me was the, um, the company gives us unlimited time off. But it's almost impossible to take the time. If I take time off, the workload falls on other people, and no one wants to be that guy. Yeah, that is a toxic attitude to have in your workplace. Right. The, the, to feel like you're stuck and you have to keep crunching and working these awful hour work weeks, and the fact that you want to take time off to kind of get a mental break, and it, it in some of these cases, some people are getting sick over it, like a physical break, just like get me out for a little bit, knowing that by doing that, you're going to force somebody else to work even harder and they're already busting their butt. Um, that's, that's rough to hear. And yeah. I like the I one quote blame. of like, 
I yeah. hardly sleep. I'm grumpy at home. I have no energy to go out. I'm yeah. getting out. Getting a weekend away from work is a major achievement. If I take yeah. a Saturday off, I feel guilty. Like yeah. these are things we take for granted. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, dude, like I look, I'm having a real rough week at college right now because it's finals and I'm getting I'm getting grumpy. I'm getting tired, right? And yeah. I'm just thinking how how a person's doing that for weeks and months, maybe even a year and a half yeah. of just this game being out, being so popular, and you're stressing to keep up. What's life if you're just constantly in a shit mood all day, being yeah. grumpy all day, being so tired all day? That's not a life to live. And we like the 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 extra like layer here is just like. It, it, we think about it because we're so engrossed in it. You know, we have studios at home and abroad that are working on these games, making these games and making these experiences. And then we often for like we feel for them, but then we also forget that there are companies like Foxconn that make these consoles that employ the same tactics and even worse, and then some. And we kind of just tune our head out of it. It's like we we deal with the devil, you know. Mm-hmm. But in this case, like the. I don't know. It's just, it's a weird situation that I have conflicting feelings of. And the conflicting feelings are anger and guilt that like, I feel again, like I'm a part of the problem and I'm not solving it. Do you think part of that way of solving it is unionization? Like Luke, you're a teacher. Do you think unionization is the way to go to start the healing process? I have to abstain from answering that as well because of things that are going on where we are. Yeah. Um, but I, and, and I apologize for that because um, I do have strong feelings and thoughts there. However, uh, I don't think you should be blaming yourself solely. Be, you cannot exonerate and t- or take yourself away from any of the crunch that exists in all of your entertainment because, I mean, crunch existed for Endgame. Yeah. Crunch exists for uh, a number of things that we consume. Athletes work harder, longer hours at certain times and, and rest other times. And, and you see those burnouts happen in a number of industries. I don't think you should feel guilty for enjoying a product yeah. uh, at all. You just need to be conscious and aware of what is going on mm-hmm. uh, and, and allow that to maybe, do you buy every skin? Do you not? I don't think you're damaging them by not or, or it's such a complex issue, um, but I don't think you as the gamer need to feel bad yeah, because no. you enjoyed a piece of content. Yes. Yeah. No, like, it's just it's just like it's kind of just like finding out like your favorite singer behind the scenes is just a real mm. is a real. Yeah, character. it's kind of absolutely like, you know, it's like kind of like looking up to Kanye West. Right. You're like, mm-hmm. I love his music. But man, trap doors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and that and that happens regularly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's a, it's a. Kind what of- we envisioned for them was not was not what we expected. Yeah. Yeah. We would think that with this game it adapting so fast over time that it has learned, and maybe like yeah, like I'm thinking Epic Man is constantly in the hiring process. You know, they're constantly, and they even said this in the article. There's like some of the solutions just like throw bodies at it. It's like, holy mm-hmm. crap. It's like, is Ulysses S. Grant's ghost running this company? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. my God, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty nuts. But with that, again, it's a complex issue. Kyle, I don't know. I, I, I guess I could speak for, for the whole unionization thing. So yeah. I, I know Luke can't, but I definitely think that there's a reason why companies don't want it. But I don't think it's also the silver bullet, and mm-hmm. I'll be vague enough to say that. That I, I think it, it's it's a it's something that could help. But like to Luke's point is, yeah, grind you know or crunch isn't everything, and sometimes you do have to do it, and you do have to put that extra work in. <laughs> but when it is excessive, when when is it when is it enough or or too much, Luke? Right. Or, sorry, Kyle. What about you? Before we get to I the mean- next story. I mean, yeah, I, I I agree. I think it's something that needs to be discussed, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of things also have to change as well. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it it. But I, I I can understand where you're coming from, where you feel a little guilty. I I understand that. I mean, mm-hmm. um, that's so like I don't have that attachment to Fortnite, but when the um, 
quick sidebar, like when John Oliver did the thing about WWE, yeah, about the the health thing, mm-hmm. that really that really bummed me out, yeah. and it it was. It, it it's still weird watching, knowing that these these wrestlers put their bodies on the line and then are treated so poorly in their mm-hmm. contracts, and like knowing that if they get injured, they're, they're like they're yeah. done and they don't really have their back. Like it sucks. Yeah. So I, I definitely think a lot of things have to change, but I think having it being out there mm-hmm. is good, so people are aware, and hopefully it starts forcing some stuff. All right. With that, let's get into. Some flash news. What's the first piece of flash news, Kyle? Let's get to new some happy online news. PlayStation Gear store launches today. Ooh. Greetings, PlayStation Nation. We are pleased to announce that our new online PlayStation Gear store launches today with shipping to the US, Canada, and Mexico. PlayStation Gear store is your one stop shop for limited gear inspired by PlayStation, which is packed with newly designed products for you to enjoy. Head over to the PlayStation Gear store to check out the products we have available from your favorite games and studios. Such as Blood, Bloodborne, Concrete Genie, Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, The Last of Us Part Two, Uncharted, and Kojima Productions, as well as iconic designs from the PlayStation brand. We're working to bring even more items to the PlayStation Gear Store, including new limited edition items that range from collectibles, brand collaborations, and seasonal products to just name a few. Oh, man. We know this has been... The Gear Store, Luke, I don't know if you know this, has been down for like a year. Like we yeah. don't know mm-hmm. where it went. It just magically one day just poof, right, right then and there. And now it's finally back. So my question to you, sirs, I'll start with you, Kyle. Is there yeah. anything that tickled your fancy? Oh, so many things. Yeah. And, and I'm so upset because I don't have money for all this stuff. No but money I mean, I would love to have some God of War shirts. And mm-hmm. um, on the actual PlayStation Gear store, one of like the headers. Um, are these really really cool pint glasses with God of War designs on them? Like one is just the the uh, the runes of the axe mm-hmm. on the thing. Oh, it looks so so. I'm looking good. at it right um, now. You, you know what I find interesting though about this press? I love the bomber about jacket. It? I'm sorry, I cut you yes. off. Yes, bomber jacket. Bomber jacket is dope. Yeah. What I what I think is interesting is that all these games that they're promoting, Concrete Genie's in there, which is very happy for me because i think that game is going to be great Mm -hmm. i was worried that they were not going to support it all that much but it's it's right up there with bloodborne and ghosts and last of us it's pretty good to see you know i'm a slut for some mugs and a good thermos here or there like like a good bottle um Mm -hmm. and i gotta say for the most part i'm i'll be here's my takeaway very disappointed in the bloodborne stuff not very good okay not very good. Don't like I the one that says Bloodborne I like, but the cap. Don't like the cap whatsoever. Very picky about these things. The things that I do like, the PlayStation water bottle, that's just dope. And then yep. the Sacred Symbols uh water bottle, those are also dope. And yeah. then yeah, the Kojima mug, you can consider that one bought. I, I, I just bought. I didn't look yet. I wanted to make sure they had a big man size, and yeah. they do. So oh, I'm very do. excited. Got, oh my God. Yeah. All right. Luke, I know you're very thrilled about this news. Don't worry about it. We'll get to the next one. No, I'm a sucker for a good shirt, man. I'm looking through them. The rainbow symbols. T looks good. I love uh, when you stream. You like to have like merch that looks, you know, it's in support of stuff that you like. Um, and I thought some of their designs look really good. I'm a sucker for a good hoodie. I love the Uncharted Four stuff. Yeah. I'd wear one of those PlayStation hoodies, man. Those things look good. The zip ups, yeah. It's just, man, they're expensive. A lot of this stuff. Yeah, like, Shoo, yeah. Twenty five bucks, but it's rainbow. And that's dope. You know me, I mm-hmm. like good supporting of the pride. You know? I like this. Go out there. Go get your swag, people. Go get your swag. The next bit of news, Kyle. Yeah. You Persona nerds, you're going to be real happy about this. This comes from Push Square. Persona 5 The Royal is an enhanced version of Persona 5. Launches on PS4 this year in Japan. Atlas has finally lifted the curtain on Persona 5 The Royal, and yes, it appears to be an enhanced version of Persona 5. It has new locations, new scenes, new characters, new character interactions, new attacks in combat. Persona 5 The Royal launches later this year on PlayStation 4 in Japan. It's due to hit on the 31st of October and will land in the West sometime in 2020. I feel nothing, but I know people are excited, and that's (laughs) what gets me excited. I mean, I'm excited because I stopped Persona 5. It just... I was playing it. I loved it, and then it just kind of went to the wayside. I, so I, I'm like, I'm gonna wait for this. And okay. I'm gonna play this. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna play Persona Five right now because it's twenty bucks. Yeah, I, I could throw twenty bucks at that. I'm gonna feel fine about it. Mm-hmm. But like the Royal, that's cool. That's fine. 
But then also, like, I know this is a PlayStation show, but whatever. Like, the Switch version. What's going to happen to that? Yeah. You know? cool. And then I love, you know what? Oh, Nintendo, they're so they're so innovative. You see the, you see the leaked versions of the Switch Mini? Looks I awfully familiar to something. Hmm? Hmm? Maybe the Vita like the lives Vita? after all. Cowards, oh, my God. How Bunch dare you, Nintendo? You know what? How it's like Miyamoto you. snuck into <laughs> our vault. <laughs> And so it's the opposite of shoe at the Nintendo yeah, event was, with the pictures. Yeah, he was like in a box, and then like shoes guard in the vault with his, you know, with his rifle. And he's just like, coast is clear, and then boom, Miyamoto pops out of the box, puts shoe in the box, tapes the box, and then he just he just takes his fist, like reloads it, like he's Roman Reigns, but this time it's actually cool. And then he hits the door off, and he's just like, okay, what am I taking here? I'm taking the Vita and I'm actually making it worth a damn. And Maybe that's why Reggie it. left. Yeah, that's, that's why Reggie left. <laughs> that's so weird because he stole the Vita, but he left the memory cards. Yeah, so exactly. weird. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> right? Oh my god. Yeah, uh, Luke, you don't feel anything about this, right? Not a thing. <laughs> Not a thing. Neat. <laughs> oh god, someone needs to gift that Ribo, Rancher Ribo. Are you on the case? Let's go. Oh god. Next. Story, sir. Yeah. Oh, by the way, when did we stop calling them goobers? Are they still goobers? No, they're still. They'll always be goobers. Oh, okay. Uh, this one also comes from the blog. Uh, I don't think I said that about the gear one, but this comes from the PlayStation blog, uh, announcing Raising Kratos, a God of War documentary. It's only fitting on the one-year anniversary. We're excited to share this peek behind the curtain of God of War's very own Santa Monica studio with a tw- with a trailer for our upcoming film, Raising Kratos. This full-length feature documentary coming very soon to PlayStation YouTube is an exploration into the massive undertaking it took to change the course of the God of War franchise. More importantly, this is the first time PlayStation took a chance in telling a story about the people who created this work of art. After nearly three years in production and 400 hours of footage, please follow the cinematic journey of second chances rooted in family sacrifice, struggle, and doubt. I just wanted to put this in here because I saw this trailer... I thought it was freaking awesome. Just the music yeah. alone got me pumped for God of War. Yep. And mm-hmm. also just because, again, this is another like peek behind the curtain of what it kind of takes to run you know, a video game. Or what, what you know, yep. again, it's going to be kind of like rose-petaled glasses because it's PlayStation. They're not going to be, <laughs> they're not going to show you the hard stuff. Like Corey having to fight three guys just to get this game yeah. made, right? Like Sony literally said, Shuhei's just like, you're in a room with three dudes. They're about seven feet tall. You got to fight each one. And he's just like, Corey's like, I'll do it, whatever. And he did. <laughs> one arm tied behind his back. Corey's a machine. That's why they call him Corey the Machine in that PlayStation. Yeah. Well, inside baseball. But like, it's really cool to see how games get made because oftentimes we don't see that. And the only people that do do that are no clip. Those get. He said do do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's what she said, you know, I always get one. So with that, what are your thoughts? I love it. I, so, one of my favorite types of content from last year, mm-hmm. besides God of War around this time, was seeing Corey hop up on Kind of Funny and Easy Allies and What's Good yeah. Games and just talk about the process and the little Easter eggs and behind the scenes work that of uh, of how hard it was to create such a masterpiece of a game and I'm all for this documentary. I'm going to watch it as soon as it's out and just devour it. Oh hell yeah, Luke! What about you, sir? You were excited. Very going to watch it because I know you didn't. Yes, play that one. absolutely going to watch it. Um, I hope that more stories like this occur motivate people to get into the industry and get excited about it and similarly while we get these peek behind the curtains for all these negative stories about crunching about about bad toxic culture um, i'm hoping that these show another side to the industry because all things require balance and i would hope that there are uh quite a few positives that come out of it you know yeah that's do we think there's a naughty dog one for Last of Us? Oh, absolutely there. Are. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's money to, money to be made. And it, it's no coincidence that this is coming out uh, so far after God of War. This is reigniting interest in the franchise uh, ahead of what will likely be a sequel announcement for PlayStation 5 or something. Like, like they're keeping God of War relevant in our minds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. There's a rumor that's hit. Yeah. Would you like to read it? Sure. This comes from a place called Segment Next. PlayStation 4 Super Slim leaked ahead of official reveal. (laughs) Big ol' grain of salt. Mm -hmm. But Sony has been prone to dropping prices for its tech in the past. PS2, PS3, PS Vita, all getting slim equivalents. One, 
Is this what is this what the thing said? I'm sorry, Joe. This is Oh uh okay, so here's what this, I did. I bullet pointed you it. kind of I, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh number one would price uh, around two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Slimmer, obviously, cheaper to produce and ship. And three, we'll have a disk drive. Oh boy. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, I found it. What are you alluding to? <laughs> yeah, right? So okay. With that, this rumor, just a big old rumor. It's literally a Reddit rumor. So it's probably something that doesn't exist. But seeing PlayStation's track record with the PlayStation 2 Super Slim, PlayStation 3 Super Slim, the Vita remaster, and even the PlayStation 1, um, the remaster, you know, you know what I mean, yeah, with the PlayStation 1 Slim, it goes to show that PlayStation and Sony are known to doing this. With that said... Does this go on to further push the narrative of how bad the Xbox Sad Edition is? I'm going to go with you, Luke. I'm asking you the tough questions, okay? Mr. Uh, Xbox Moneybags over there, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure I understand the question. Does the idea of a super slim PlayStation If this hurt? PlayStation is what this rumor says it is, that it is a $200 machine with a disk drive, push the narrative that Xbox is... Xbox Sad Edition, where it's digital only, no disc drive, two hundred and fifty bucks. Does it push mm-hmm. that narrative further that PlayStation's kind of gets it on the hardware side, where Xbox doesn't? Type of deal, you know. If true, yes, yeah. yes, a two hundred dollar PlayStation absolutely, absolutely does. But I think we can all, I think we're all expecting price drops this year mm-hmm. uh, with new systems around the corner next year. Um, but if if a two hundred dollar super slim PlayStation Four exists. Then yes, absolutely, because that then you're in impulse buy gift giving territory. Now, if you see a mimicked Xbox price drop that that is also expected, and then the fifty dollars uh, less with the sad edition happens, then then it's all good. But uh, if the sad edition, I think, is well documented as being a frustrating point for for many gamers to be priced where it is. Um, it didn't. La- it's not launching at a good price point, but I think it's going to get to that good price point quickly. Yeah. Absolutely. I like the idea of a two hundred dollars PlayStation Four. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and I'm right there with you too with the, with the sad edition. I think when it hits the holiday, you're gonna see it for somewhere in the hundred to hundred fifty dollar ball ballpark. And if it hits that, I might actually own an, an Xbox. Eventually. Exactly. And so, like, with that said, though, like, if then PlayStation ups the ante of like, hey. We you know remember with with Xbox Sad Edition no disc drive here's ours it has a disc drive two hundred bucks and then it also gets discounted to one fifty during the holiday season. Mm-hmm. You know the memes are going to be putting the the four K Blu Ray in there. Why isn't it working <laughs> with this disc drive? It's not working. I just really want Sony to come out and have this be the PlayStation Four Rad Edition. <laughs> just cha- just one letter change. I want to see that so bad. Yeah, I want to see. Yeah, I want to see some shade <laughs> toss. But uh, and I'll be honest, and I know like I'm gonna sound like a fanboy. If this is a thing, I would buy it just so that I have something to record with, so that I can yeah. always have my capture card connected to, mm-hmm. so that I could record gameplay with. Because the future of bad bit, I'm gonna need a lot of gameplay footage. So. For me, I would want something for my entertainment hub, for my 4K, my beautifulness, which it would be like, you know, if I'm playing the latest and greatest games on there. But if I'm playing something just to review it and just to, you know, pump out content and get, again, gameplay footage on, I need something always connected. And I, I, I need that. So I think it would just help me cord management, cable management wise. But yeah, not that I would want it because, oh my God, this is great. It's just like, yeah, I'd do it because it's cheap and now I can kind of afford it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. With that, let's get to the drop. This week is a a slow week. So usually the latest and greatest come out each and every week. All that jazz. We pick one game from this huge list. This list this week of games that came out on PlayStation. Very slim pickings. But of course, me and Kyle picked Days Gone. Days Gone is an open action adventure game set in the harsh wilderness of two years after the devastating global pandemic. Play as Dickon St. John, a drifter and a bounty hunter who rides the broken road, fighting to survive while searching for a reason to live. Damn, that was... That was good. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait, Joe. I'm picking mine up right before I go to Endgame tomorrow night. 
Um, got my collector's edition all paid off. I'm ready to yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to hop in this world. It, we played it at PAX, and ever since then, it's been at the forefront of my mind. I think mm-hmm. that's also why I don't want to start a new game. And yeah. I haven't played like a really new game since mm-hmm. then, because I knew I was going to dive into this this weekend. So Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. very excited. I'm pumped. I'm ready. And with that, sir, Luke, do you have anything you would like to share with the class? <laughs> anything that piques your interest, piques your fancy? Uh, I, I alluded to it earlier, but Mortal Kombat 11. Um, I, I had to say, I, I received a code from the publisher uh, and played through the story mode uh, ahead of launch and have dabbling in some of the towers now. Uh, it is a very good fighting game very good fighting game. I think there's a lot to enjoy. If you have played Injustice or Mortal Kombat X, then you know what you're getting in 11, and it's just prettier. It's it's cleaner. Um, and I say cleaner, like, visually. It's extremely hyper-violent uh, to the point of hilarity and comic relief in some uh, cases. Uh, and also, Ronda Rousey's in it, so that's, you know... What? She's a celebrity, I think. That's pretty cool. Well, you know, um, but Mortal Kombat 11, good fighting game. Good yeah. fighting game. Okay. Um, and I think uh, anybody that has an interest in it would be happy with that purchase. It's a good drop. Well, there you go. That's been the drop this week. And before we get to Andy's uh, snail mail here, I'm sorry, Famous Seamus. Your question was freaking awesome, and that should have went into the Persona question. That's my bad. So let me pull out of a question that you also had, your number two question on Discord. But before we do that, again... You can always send in your questions over to the Casa de Bad Bit Discord, or you could tweet at us at PS Trophy Room, and you could ask us all your PlayStation-related questions, or you could send your mail to Andy's house, and I get to steal it each and every week. This week, I'm going to be honest with you. I was too busy to... I'm My brain, it's done. Oh. Yes, Luke. I have a question. Um, where do we stand on, on Rancher Ribo? <sighs> That's a, that, you know what? That's a better. I'm question. happy that you're announcing him as the, his real name, his yeah. true name, right? As one does, correct? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. If there ever is to be crossplay <laughs> unity, we all need to recognize yeah. that Rancher Ribo is the appropriate name, and everybody that knows that inside joke is well aware that it's funny. <laughs> and anyone that doesn't know, it's funny. It's funny. Okay, get over it. But also go over to Ribo Flavins. At Twitter, at Riboflavins. Just look it up. The Google the name. You'll get it. It's a vitamin. It's vitamin B. But then you vote for Rancher Ribo because he streams Farming Simulator, and Rancher Ribo sounds just better than Farmer Ribo. Farmer Ribo is like old school 80s name. wrestler. Double R, Rancher Ribo. There you go. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. No. It's like Ronda Rousey. See, I connected it. And with that, <laughs> this week, you know what? I do have something snappy. So this week, I'm busy. I got schoolwork. So what did I do? Of course, to just you know get some stress out, relieve some stress, I took a plane, all right, United. I'm too big to fit in the seat. They tossed me out mid-flight. Really kind of gentle this time. But they tossed me out <laughs> right where they needed to because I was st- skydiving toward Andy House's house. All Mission Impossible like because I, I watched Mission Impossible Rogue Agent and Fallout the other day. Those movies are great. I watched them back to back and I'm doing flips and shit in my little you know squirrel suit that is two sizes, way too small for me. And I roll, I duck and roll onto the roof, I jump into the chimney, and I got stuck for three days. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you were yeah, man and like they were putting up like they were they were like you know using the fireplace for stuff like they roast marshmallows or whatever like real family shit and like i listen they're like why isn't the smoke just being lodged up here so they hire a chimney sweep a little little oliver twist looking fella and so he sees me he's just like well this is a big lump of coal because at this point i'm just dazed and confused i'm dehydrated i'm at the point of dying and i'm about to 20 27 hours this situation just ripped my arm off to just kind of get a leeway in here but this little fella he 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 pushes me down i'm bam in the living room chimney sweep now solved and honestly i i fix that chimney because there's a lot of problems going on so i really i really pushed some situation out anyway so i may have ruined his living room because now it's all just you know charcoal everywhere i get to his kitchen i find his mail now i need to replenish my electrolytes i drink all of his gatorade and he had powerade because a dumb idiot doesn't know good gatorade if it hit him in the mouth stupid idiot so i take his mail and i get out of there i get out my re- electrolytes replenished What do you think Andy's insurance is like? (laughs) (laughs) 
through the goddamn roof. Famous Seamus writes in going, Someone data mined the Switch version of MK11 and found some potential DLC characters oh, yeah. or characters with a K. <laughs> See what you did there. Uh, these characters include Nightwolf, Fujin, Sindal, Shiva, Spawn. Like from, oh, that's dope if yeah. it's Spawn. Right? Oh, Ash Williams better. from Evil Dead franchise and the Joker. Batman Joker, not Persona 5 Joker, Joker, uh, with already announced Shang Sun. What do you think of this list? Oh, there's another one in there. What's that? Uh, the Terminator was in in that part of that leak too, I believe. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about this list? I'm going to go with Luke because he has a skeptical face on. Oh, I think no. I think it's all real. That all sounds accurate. Yeah, that's. I think like you see, I think it makes that ass character list. Yeah, and I think uh, Joker is a perfect fit, given that the the film is coming out. Given that they worked on him in Injustice, I don't think it's as ludicrous as you might initially think. Um, he would suit well with with fatalities, as would Terminator, which is kind of the next major franchise that could fit into hyperviolence. Uh, that well, that they haven't the touched on Predator yet. in the last ones, right? Yeah, I I think so. And Jason. Jason and Freddy were in them. You know, it just it would make sense is the big thing. And I love the idea of Spawn being there. Todd McFarlane talked about that at one point. Um, I think it makes perfect sense. None none of that is skepticism Uh, from the get go. I was just thinking uh, how silly the story would be if they tried to wind that in there. And really, what would Ronda Rousey do? How would she handle it? Really, just want to beat to death this joke that she is a bad actress in this game. <laughs> just really, want to make that clear. <laughs> I'm sure she is. Oh God. Oh boy. And yeah. when it comes to Joker being in MK11, uh, wasn't Sub Zero in Injustice? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so that sense. totally. Makes My sense. question here, because I think this is a great list, because I see the Joker in it. Mark Hamill Joker, yay or nay? Yay. Yeah. I sure. Know, yeah. Are we getting him in? You think that Star Wars money is, is you know influences <laughs> price? I think he found new life when he was uh, in his world of Joker thanks to the Arkham games, and uh, he certainly seems like a man revitalized. So yeah, I, and honestly, if that's the case, I would buy it. I, that's a, I love him. I love him so much. I'd do it. I'd do it. Eric writes in, regarding the things being mentioned about Days Gone this past week, do you believe that this game will be remembered like the many other Sony exclusives, or will it be forgotten due to multiple issues? Now, I know that they're like right now, there's some like glitches and bugs. Which okay. I kind of forgot. I was going to ask you what were these because I haven't heard anything. Yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna have a massive day one uh, patch of like 25 gigs. That's fine. Fine, it's already 67. Yeah, it's normal. It happens all the time. Though. It happens all the time. A lot of space, you know? Uh, you don't get... Yeah. yeah. Uh, before, not to go away from this question, I was looking up issues with Day Gone. Like, I, I Googled it. And uh, there was some Days Gone news that happened three hours ago. What happened? Yeah, so I'm going to read this from Eurogamer. Okay. Uh, Sony outlines Zombie Adventure Days Gone's first, first batch of free post-launch content. So there's some DLC that was announced today. Oh, right. There's um, a new game plus, and then there's going to be challenges, yes. I think. Um, so at launch, uh, Days Gone will feature a 30-hour golden path through its more meandering open-world activities that can can be played in either easy, normal, or hard. Hmm. Uh, in June, there will be a fourth difficulty level known as Survival. This removes fast travel and survival vision and incorporates an immersive uh, HUD, stripping out maps and UI indicators. Um, there's also... Challenge, combat challenges every week. Um, you'll get new bikes, new hordes, um, uh, all in June, and they're all going to be free. No that's pretty need dope. To, to pay for them, which is awesome. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Um, yeah. So with that, I'll I'll say this: uh, how I feel about Days Gone. I'll answer in this question. I'll answer a question with a question, guys, gang. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a game called Guess the Rating. What do you think on the number scale of one to ten? This game's going to get. I'll go for you, Luke. What is this game going to get? Are we are we talking Metacritic? Metacritic. Number? Yeah, yeah, the Metacritic number of this. Eighty three. Shit. Took it right out of my mouth. I was going to say eighty three too. <laughs> Yo, no way. Because I was saying eighty three in my head as well. <laughs> 
Yo, yeah, that's, that's a great score, though. That's yeah, a great yeah. score. Yeah, really a wonderful, wonderful video game to kind of take them towards towards their Twilight era of whatever they launch and transition from PS4 to five. Mm-hmm. Days Gone looks good. They've had a tough time distinguishing themselves from uh, The Last of Us, mm-hmm. and this is their chance to do so. And I think uh, Sam Winter seems like a great actor. I, I'm excited yeah. to see Days Gone come out like i really think it's gonna be a good one that's gonna be one that i play before this generation ends yeah and i'm so happy for bent they've been working on this forever and i'm happy that it's their time to shine and absolutely uh i'm hoping it's as good as what i think it's gonna be and i'm gonna have a blast yeah same here i think i think it's gonna be really solid i don't think it's gonna be on the levels of spider-man or god of war i'm just expecting Mm -hmm. a really great experience and with that um, because we don't have any getting fit with bad bit at this very moment. Don't worry, things are happening. Don't worry, things are good. Um, we're gonna do the trophy room shout out. Everybody, go show your support for Ben Studio at Ben Studio on Twitter. Tell them good luck. Give them all the positive praise because no doubt they're probably crunching right now to get this game out. So the least you can do is say thank you for your hard work. Whether you're buying the game or not, they definitely need all the support they can get. And with that, everybody, the last bit of news. Our winner for our Days Gone giveaway until our next giveaway, which is probably like our anniversary giveaway, Mm. is, drum roll, because I lost it again. Don't worry about it. Ghost in the Glass. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ghost in the Glass. Now, please, 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 here's what you need to do, okay? Because you need to prove to me, Ghost, that you're not that you're not a bot. You need to message me. I can't message you. We got to, you know, you got to be, we got to be proactive here. All right. So you got a week to get to me and I'll mail this game out to you. That's how we're going to roll with this. Okay. Okay. So with all that said, let's get to the plugs. Luke, what do you got a plug for me, sir? Guys, I'd love it if you would uh, follow me on Twitter at MLS Reserves. That would mean the world. Uh, and then check me out over on Mixer where I stream uh, all types of stuff. A lot of Apex, a lot of uh, Anthem, and you know, a lot of ID at Xbox games. Mixer.com slash ghost. There you go. Uh, and Kyle, is there anything you'd like to plug, sir? As always, I'd like to plug myself at Hootet Ninja on Twitter and on PSN. You can follow uh, my show all about the kind of funny community called Best Friends Talk Funny at BFS Talk Funny on Twitter and wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, also, our new podcast, Dollar Slice Pod. Uh, you can find that on Twitter at Dollar Slice Pod. It's just a bunch of the kind of NYC crew getting together, talking games, everything we nerd out about, and it's fantastic. So go ahead. All right. And you can find us here on any RSS feed of your service, whether that's Spotify, whether that's iTunes. You can rate us five stars. I'd greatly appreciate that, guys and gals. If you could do that, that'd mean the world. Uh, Google Play now. <laughs> I got that working, gang. Hell yeah. My favorite podcast service is Overcast, but you can find us on other places like Podbean or YouTube.com slash Bad Bit Games. Or just, you know, just look at it, YouTube search engine. You know, bad big games. We're there. Okay, hit that subscribe button because it helps me out. Builds this big, beautiful family that I call home. So, with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation. <laughs>